When we think of problems, we usually think of one solution. But what if we can come up with three solutions instead and let our managers choose? In this video, I'm going to share with you one career tip that I learned in the first internship that I've done and that has helped me to transform the way I approach complex problem discussions and I believe that that can help you to do so as well. The idea is to come up with three options to the problem and recommend one of them as the suggested solution for the team to decide on which one to go for. Let me take you through an example of how this works and why this can position us as a collaborative team member. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Andrew Toh and in this channel, we'll talk about ways to make work more fun and productive. So sometimes we come across very complex and sticky situations where there are multiple stakeholders, multiple team members involved in the situation and every single one of them have their own different needs and wants. And the problem could be made worse by the fact that there is a certain deadline that needs to be met, otherwise there will be drastic consequences. So time is of essence and the decision must be made fast. In such situations, there are usually calls that involve most team members of the project to discuss what are the next steps to do. And in such situations, it is an opportunity to present three options and recommend one of them as the recommended next step. So I would like to use an example of a project that I found online at successfulprojects.com and so here is an example that I thought is a fairly common situation in, in today's world. So a client has approached a project manager to roll out an application and the project manager has already completed the main design phase of that application and, and the client has given the approval for the project manager to go ahead. So in the first stages of the development of the app, the project manager realized that some elements of the design is not compatible with the existing infrastructure of the client and the project manager felt the need to review the design issues with the client but it turns out that uh, the, the client is actually super busy and the project manager has tried to contact the client several times and the client did not reply uh, until the client finally uh, said that uh, he is very busy the client is super busy and the client actually expected the project manager to sort out all of the issues right and that's why the client is paying the project manager and the project manager really has to deliver this project on time otherwise there will be penalties and in as, as spelled out in the contract so what actions can the project manager take so in this example we can imagine that we are working for the project manager and the project manager has asked us to prepare a presentation of their problem of the design problem to the rest of the team members and also to the senior management. What we could do is to first describe the problem, right? And then come up with three viable options of what we can do next steps. For example, the first option is we can send an email to the client with clear questions and answers and setting up a specific time. And since the client is busy, we can offer three timing options for the client to meet online over a quick call, over a half an hour call, just to go through some of those problems and make some decisions over there to overcome some of those design issues. The second option we can think of is to find a subject matter expert that can help us to make that application compatible with the infrastructure for whatever reasons, right? There is a blocker, there is a, there is a dependency on something and that thing is blocking the project from progressing. We can find a somebody who knows how to remove that blocker in that application. It could be an external party or it could be another expert that uh, we know of. And if we already know someone, we can suggest inviting that subject matter experts into the project to help us uh, design the application to make it compatible with the client's requirements. Or the third option that we can think of is to escalate it even further to, to the next level and invite uh, executive senior executive members to, to, to this problem. And since this project is super important and we don't want to disappoint a client, then we probably might want to bring it up to the next level to ensure that upper management could, is aware of the problem and they could help us in this situation. Now what we've done here is that we've we've come up with three different options and each of these options could also have its pros and cons and could then invite the project team to, to debate and to discuss which of these three options should we go for. We could go for one of the three, two of the three, or in fact, just do all of them. But in some situations, we may not be able to choose all three of the options and may only have to just go with one of them. The reason why this three options, one action plan works is because we empower the entire team with options to think about and people like to make decisions. People like to see, like a, imagine there's, there's a problem statement and then there are like three choices, A, B, and C. It's like a multiple choice. Right? And people like to make options to say the answer should be A or the answer should be B or we should go A and B. Right? It's, it's, it's back like in, uh, 
it is like in school where we had to, to circle the correct answer. And this works because when we define A, B, and C, we are basically defining the boundaries of the solution. And discussions can be focused on whether we should pick A over B or B over C or why B is better than C, neither of the above or all of the above. And those discussions usually lead to a healthy outcome where a decision is made. And if that choice did not work out, we can always go back to the other two options as a backup. Secondly, thinking of these three options demonstrates that we have thought about the problem in multiple angles and we are able to propose multiple backup options. Now, my observations of this method is that I've seen this happen from time to time again and again in complex high-level management discussions where there is a huge problem and there are many people in a call. Some of them are subject matter experts, some of them are senior management, some of them are project uh, leaders while others are project team members and there are usually options laid out in that call because the objective of that call is that a decision must be made so that there is a clear action plan of what has to be done next. It is not just presenting information about the background story and going to who, what, where, when and why, but rather it's going more into the how, what are we supposed to do next, more of the how do we get there next, how do we overcome this problem. And by coming up with three options, it kickstarts with this discussion to get one step closer towards the solution. So I actually learned this tip from the first internship that I worked for and my manager told me about this and I thought that this really makes sense and I've applied it again and again many multiple times in my career and I found that it has really helped to liven up the discussion. And I think that this technique also works in other situations such as when we are designing something for a client or when we are presenting something to a client, we usually come with three different options, right? Like for example, if we want to design an art poster, right? We come up with three different designs, right? And then we, we let the customer choose. And because we let the customer choose, it makes them feel in control and actually makes them feel good about making the decision as well. Now in theory, it sounds like we're doing three times the work because we've come up with three different set of solutions. But what I find practically is that it's probably only about 1.5 to two times of the amount of work if we were to only just come up with one solution. Because once we come up with the first solution, we probably already have a in-depth understanding of their problem. And so we come up just to think a little laterally, left and right, to think about the second and third options. And people generally like to have a backup option if the most preferred option doesn't work out. So I hope that this method of finding three options and recommending one action helps you in your career, whether in any kind of design project or any, or any kind of problems that you have to present to the management. I hope that this helps you and let me know how this goes in the comments below. Let me know if it helps and, and I hope to see you in my next video.